Hey, what's up guys? Mike at Red Fox here. Today we're going to talk about what GPUs you should be buying for mining in December of 2020. All right, let me introduce you to my spreadsheet. Uh, so I have a lot of data here and I want to talk about what we're going to be looking at and why this is going to be helpful for deciding uh, what graphics cards I might buy, you might buy for cryptocurrency mining in December of 2020. So you can see here, I have a collection of both Nvidia and AMD cards. And the way I thought about this is, first of all, what are our current generation cards? You know, the cards that are either out, just came out, or maybe still coming out. And then what are some previous generation favorites in the cryptocurrency mining space? And all the data I collected is either from my own personal experience, I have many of these cards, or it's data collected from a variety of sources such as you know, other YouTube videos, Discord uh, uh, responses, Twitter posts, um, Reddit posts. I really looked at as many data points as I could to get really accurate information, especially as it goes uh, towards hash rate results and uh, wattage used. So the two things that we're really gonna focus on in this video in deciding what is the right graphics card for you is gonna be efficiency and it's gonna be the cost for, for one mega hash. And these are, in my opinion, and, and I've learned a lot of this just over the, the last few years of being involved in this space, these are the two things you really wanna consider when investing in one graphics card, six graphics cards, you know, a farm of graphics cards. This is where you want to really look. And while every single one of us is going to have a unique situation and unique goals in what we want to accomplish, I really believe that these two base aspects of mining are, are really where you want to start looking. Me personally, I look at efficiency as number one. I'm a residential miner. Uh, I pay higher electricity rates, um, so I really need my cards to work for me, and I don't need to be paying a lot out of pocket for electricity. For other people, it may be your cost for one mega hash, depends on your budget, you know, it depends on your individual goals and what you want to do. And we'll talk more about that as we go through uh, the video today. So we're going to look at NVIDIA cards, AMD cards. Um, the prices that I have here are the MSRP prices. Listen, it's December of 2020. Technology is hard to come by. GPUs are hard to come by. So many of these prices are inflated right now, but these are the true prices that these cards launched at. And these are the, the base MSRP prices for those cards. So let's talk about an example here. I'm going to pick this RTX 3080 on the bottom. And we'll just walk through one and then uh, we'll, you know, we'll get right to the point here and look at what the best cards are. So this card retails at MSRP of $729. And at its most efficient, it's gonna pull 240 watts at, and give you 97 mega hash. And I wasn't, I didn't say this before, so let me be clear. We're using Ethereum as our benchmark here and that's the at hash algorithm. Why? That's the standard. Um, Ethereum is a big dog in the mining community. It's got the most hash on it. And just classically, that's what we've used to measure uh, a GPU by. So that's what we'll continue to do today. You absolutely can use any other algorithm you'd like. Ethereum is definitely the most profitable right now. So that's what we're going to stick by. So this RTX 3080 is going to do 97 mega hash on Ethereum, which is an incredible number. Uh, but you can look at its efficiency here and it's a 0.4 and we get that number by dividing our 97 mega hash by the wattage that's going to output right and this is the best measurable that i've ever seen and, and used in the community to decide and compare gpus by now on the last end here to get one mega hash you're going to spend 77 dollars 52 cents and where we get that number from is the the price of the card divided by the amount of mega hash that you're going to get out of it. 
And that's really what your cost is going to be to get one mega hash out of this card. So let's do a comparison here. And the best way to do that, I already have this sorted by efficiency and what the most efficient cards are. And I want to stress this. These are the numbers that we have today as I'm making this video. Some things could change and we'll go into a speculative part soon, but these are the numbers that we have today. So when I look at these numbers, the most efficient card is the RTX 3060 Ti. I just did a video on this. Please check it out because I'm, I'm really, really impressed with this card. And when you look and compare here and, and go ahead and sort this, where does that card fall in the cost for one mega hash? It's really not bad. It's third from the top here. You know, the only cards that beat it are the 5600 XT and the 5700. And this card's discontinued. It's end of life. You can barely find these. And you, you're going to have a real hard time finding them at that price. 5700 XT is still an absolutely great card. But as far as newest generation, here it is. Super efficient. Really good cost for one mega hash. This is the card I'm looking at. So I want to say this, your goals may be very different and this may not tell the whole story for you. And I want you to think about something, density, right? So if I'm looking to build out a farm, you know, the RTX 3060 Ti is definitely the most efficient. So, so what does that really mean is that card is going to be more profitable for me because I don't have to spend a ton of on electricity. So you always got to think of that balance of what is this GPU going to be using wattage wise that I got to pay for versus what is it bringing in when it's mining. But why you may have a different goal is because say you're going to build out a farm or say you're going to even build out two, three, four rigs, you know, six RX 3060 TIs per say four rigs and that's four motherboards, four power supplies four SSDs, four CPUs, right? And while it's super efficient, maybe for your goals, it makes more sense to get an RTX 3080. It's not as efficient, but you're going to be able to maybe build two rigs with two motherboards and two CPUs. You see where I'm going and have a much smaller footprint and less GPUs to troubleshoot and have to upkeep than if you went the RTX 3060 Ti route. Now, don't get me wrong, efficiency in the long run is how you're going to break even in, in, or ROI on these cards faster, but you also got to think about what your goals are, what your situation is, what your budget is, what your long-term plan is to make a decision here. Okay, let's talk about a little bit of speculation. So over here, we are going to talk about the what-ifs. You know, the last screen we talked about was how everything stands right now. And what you may have noticed is that NVIDIA is really taking the crown here. And when you think about Ethereum, you typically think about AMD being the most efficient, having a really good cost per mega hash. Um, but with the GPU releases this year, that seems to have changed a little bit. But I want to stress this. Don't count AMD out. We learned this with the 5700 series. These cards were not hashing at 58 mega hash when they first released. It took a lot of tweaks. It took some BIOS modding. It took some memory timings and a little bit more in order to get these cards pushing 58, 57 mega hash at 130, 120 watts. So when we look at first glance, let me switch back here, at our 6800 and 6800 XT, these cards are not looking good. They're not super efficient. And that cost for one mega hash is not good to look at. It's pretty high. But I want to speculate here because NVIDIA, when those cards come out, that, that's pretty much where they're going to mine at. Maybe they'll get a percent jump here or there as miners get updated. What I've learned with AMD cards is the months that come once they get in miners' hands, you usually get more performance out of them. And that might very well be true with this new series of cards. And I think Bitsby Trippin is onto something here. He encountered 
a bug accidentally when he was testing these cards. It was a 6800 specifically where he was able to get 80 mega hash out of the card. I wasn't sure of the wattage exactly at that time, but that gives maybe a little glimpse of what these cards could potentially do. You know, and with the 5700 series, we learned that they're really, as far as mining Ethereum, no difference between the XT and non-XT variant. Is that going to be true here? Is it going to be worth spending this extra money to get the XT version if they're going to hash the same? And that's going to be a big difference towards your cost for one mega hash. Now, I don't know what's going to happen here. This is all super speculative, but I just want to say don't count AMD out. What I've put in is essentially what these cards will have to do. They'll have in the yellow here, they'll have to hit 75 mega hash at this wattage to take the crown of being the most efficient cards and still have a semi decent cost for one mega hash. Now, as of making this video, the 6900 XT is still not released. Listen, it's a thousand dollar card. So just like the 3090, which you've seen I left off here, probably not viable for mining. But again, here's what it would have to do. 92 mega hash at around 180 watts in order to be anywhere in the ballpark of being an efficient card. But still, that is a brutal cost for one mega hash at almost $11. So I don't know about that one. Last those are the MSRP prices, but you can get some deals on these cards and I wanna go through a few of them right now. First of all, Zotac has been putting, when they have them in stock, their 3000 series at 10% off every now and then. So I've taken that into account here and that, for example, for your RTX 3060 Ti, greatly lowers your cost for one mega hash. I've seen RX 5700s and 5600s show up on Amazon Warehouse or Newegg for really good deals. And again, really lowering your cost for one mega hash, which may help you make different decisions about what cards to get. And the last tip I'll give is going to be on the 1660 Ti and 1660 Super. These are prices that show up on EVGA's B stock, where you're going to be able to get these cards for a much lower cost for one mega hash. And these cards are still one of my favorites. Uh, super efficient when they came out. They're getting a little sidelined by the new RTX uh, 3060 Ti, but still really, really good cards. Look for some deals online because if you can lower your price here and be patient, your cost for one mega hash is also going to go down. So listen, in summary here, your goals may be very different than mine. My goal is to always have the most efficient card I've really found that that in the long game, and we're talking not months, but years, makes the big difference. I'm going to be able to break even on that card sooner. Sure, I may have more rigs, more heat, more motherboards, more power supplies, but in my experience and in my opinion, that's the way to go because you're not fighting your electric bill. And as long as your cost for one mega hash is semi-decent, it doesn't have to be the lowest, I think it really makes sense to go for those cards. But like I said, your goals may be very different than mine. I have my stuff in a grow tent in a basement in a house that I own. You may be doing this in your apartment. You may be doing this at your parents' house in the bedroom. and You can't be having 13 GPUs mining in there. Maybe you just wanna have three RTX 3080s when you save your money and they have a small footprint, small to maintain, not generating potentially as much heat. So those are some things to consider. But for me, in summary, this is still the card I'm looking at, but I'm absolutely not counting AMD out of the game. I'm gonna be paying very close attention to what those cards can do uh, and see if they're gonna be viable for mining and bring a really, really good efficiency. Anyway, you guys, uh, I hope this was helpful. I really wanted to share this with you. This is this I made while I made this spreadsheet. These ideas are not unique unique to me. Um, these ideas have been around in the mining community uh, the whole time I've been involved in it. And just over time, these are the things that I've looked at when I've made decisions on what kind of rigs I want to build or what cards I want to add to my currently running rigs. So again, I hope this helps you. Um, I'm going to post this spreadsheet 
So you can tinker with it. You can adjust prices. You can adjust results as things get updated. I'll put that down below. Um, listen, if you like these videos, if you like the things I'm doing, I'm new to YouTube. I'm figuring this out as I go. I really have no idea what I'm doing on YouTube, but uh, if you like this stuff, please hit the like button, subscribe. I'm going to try to post new videos uh, every week or so, but please take care of yourself, take care of each other, and I'll see you in the next video.